Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going deep today into AI, uh, starting to understand relationships and not just individual data points, the world of graph foundation models. Yeah, it's really cool. You know, we've got those foundation models, those large language models, great with text, awesome with code, but graphs, graphs it's, are different. Right, they're not just like a list, it's how they connect to each other. Exactly. So to help us unpack this, we have a research paper, GFT graph foundation model with transferable tree vocabulary. Catchy, right? Yeah, we'll break it down though, don't worry. Yeah, one of the big challenges with graphs is figuring out how to find patterns that can apply to all these different types of graphs and tasks. And older methods kind of relied on this thing called graphon theory, <laughs> which had some pretty strict assumptions. Or they would identify specific subgraphs, which computationally gets really complex. So what did this research paper come up with? What did they do? Yeah. This is where it gets really cool. Computation trees. They found that these things called computation trees emerge naturally from the way certain graph neural networks process information. Okay, wait, hold on. Graph neural networks, GNNs, remind us what those are. Absolutely. So think of it like a network of interconnected nodes, like a social network, and each node holds some information. And the way these nodes work is they pass messages back and forth to each other. They share information. They combine information. That process is called message passing. So where do these computation trees fit into this whole message passing GNN world? So the computation tree basically captures the unique pattern of how information flows from a node's neighbor to that specific node. It's like a fingerprint of that node's role and connections within the network. Interesting. So it's not just like the node itself, but it's how the information flows to it. That's really important. Exactly. And the researchers actually proved this. They found that if two graphs have similar computation trees, even if they look totally different, the AI is much better at transferring what it's learned from one to the other. So you could train on one type of graph, like a social network, and then and apply it to, I don't know, like a molecular structure or something completely different. Precisely. Yeah. That's the key to AI being more adaptable, more versatile. And to prove this, they designed this really clever experiment using synthetic graphs. Ah, so they like built graphs to test this theory out. Yes. So yeah. They created graphs with different recurring substructures, which are called motifs. Right. And some graphs had similar motifs, but different computation trees and vice versa. Different motifs, but similar trees. What they found was really cool. What did they find? Even if the motifs were different, if the trees were similar, the AI performed much better at translating knowledge. So it really highlighted that it's not just about the individual components, but the way the information flows through those components. So the structure of how they're related matters more than like what the actual things are. Yes. You could have two completely different networks, but if they have similar information flow patterns, then the AI can make connections and transfer knowledge. Crazy. Yeah. So did they only test this with these made up graphs or did they go into the real world? Great question. They wanted to see if this held true in the real world. So they looked at things like airport networks, oh, where wow. you have airports with similar flight patterns that tend to be connected. And then they also looked at WebKB link networks, where you have you know links all over the place. Two very different types of networks. Very different. OK. And they found that even with these variations, the computation tree similarity still predicted how well the AI could learn and transfer that knowledge. OK, so we've got this computation tree concept seems pretty important for AI learning on graphs. Mm -hmm. Did they actually build something new using this idea? Yeah, they did. They developed a new graph foundation model called GFT. It stands for Graph Foundation Model with Transferable Tree Vocabulary. It's like it's learning the grammar of graphs. That's a great way to put it. Mm. And so it's trained in two phases. First, there's this pre-training phase where it learns from a whole bunch of different graphs and it builds this vocabulary of these common computation tree patterns. Got it. And then there's the fine-tuning phase where it gets specialized for a specific task, like classifying nodes, predicting links. Uh -huh. The really clever part is that it unifies all these different tasks by framing them as computation tree classification. So no matter what you're asking it to do, it's all about understanding and classifying those trees. Exactly. Did they test this thing out? How did it actually do in real world tests? Oh yeah, they put it through its paces. I bet. What happened? It performed incredibly well. It consistently outperformed existing methods, even in few shot learning scenarios. Oh wow. Where you only have a little bit of data. That's impressive. So even with like limited information, it was still able to make accurate predictions based on these computation tree patterns. Yeah, that's really promising for 
like real world applications. Absolutely. Where labeled data is hard to come by. Yeah. And there was another interesting finding too, but the size of the vocabulary, okay. of the computation tree vocabulary, having more words or tokens didn't always lead to better performance. Oh, interesting. So there's like a sweet spot. It seems that way. Too simple and it misses out, too complex and maybe it overfits. You need that just right amount. Exactly. So we've got this powerful model, understands relationships and graphs, learns from them. What does that actually mean for you? Yeah. Real world implications. Imagine drug discovery. Okay. Where AI can analyze not just the individual structures of molecules, but like the whole network. A whole system. Of interactions. Instead of just like finding a molecule that fits into a receptor, it understands the whole network of interactions so you could identify more targeted therapies. Exactly. And it's not just medicine. This has implications for social network analysis. Okay. Understanding how information spreads, identifying influential people or communities. Mm -hmm. You can even use this for fraud detection. Oh, wow. Going beyond just flagging a suspicious transaction, but analyzing a whole network of relationships. So it's like a whole other level of understanding. Yeah. This feels like a step towards like more general AI, something that can really understand the world, not just like little pieces of data here and there. I think it's a very significant step in that direction. Yeah. Traditional AI has been great at recognizing patterns, but the world is interconnected. Yeah. And to really understand the world, you have to understand the connections. And this research really shows a powerful way to do that. It's like moving from AI that finds the right answer to AI that understands the connections that lead to that answer. Yes. Totally different way of thinking. Absolutely. So this research was on this specific type of GNN, these message passing ones. Right. What about like graph transformers or other more advanced architectures? Yeah, that's an important point. This research didn't dive into that. So it seems like there's still a lot we don't know Yeah. about like the best way to represent this graph data and learn from it. What are some of the like biggest challenges in addressing those limitations? Well, for one, we need to explore those more advanced architectures. Okay. Like you said, graph transformers and see if we can push the boundaries even further with these graph foundation models. But we also need to test these models on more complex real world problems and see how they generalize. Yeah, it makes sense. To new domains and tasks. This GFT model feels like a big leap forward. AI understanding relationships, any final thoughts? I think the biggest takeaway here is that relationships matter. Yeah. And as AI evolves, its ability to understand relationships is gonna be really key to its success. But there was one more thought-provoking question oh, I, I wanna leave you with. Okay, lay it on us. What's that thought-provoking question? What if these computation trees aren't just a cool trick for graphs? What if it hints at something deeper, like how intelligence itself works? Ooh, going deep here. You know, think about it. We as humans, we're constantly making sense of the world through relationships, cause and effect, social dynamics, even how we learn language. It's all about connecting the dots. Are you saying like maybe these computation trees, how AI learns through these trees, maybe that's fundamental to how our brains work too. Yeah. It's speculation, of course. Mm -hmm. But imagine if there are underlying computation trees for how we process information, form memories, even make decisions. That's kind of a wild thought. So like... By figuring out how AI does this, we might learn about ourselves, too. Exactly. It could go the other way, too. Yeah. Maybe studying the brain could give us even more powerful and efficient ways for AI to learn. So it's like this feedback loop. Yeah. AI learning from us, us learning from AI. It highlights how cool this field is. Yeah. It's not just about building smarter machines. It's about really understanding intelligence. Well said. I think we've given our listeners a lot to think about today. Any parting words of wisdom? Just keep exploring. Keep questioning and keep connecting those dots. The future of AI <laughs> and maybe even our own understanding of intelligence lies in those connections. I love it. And to everyone listening, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of graph foundation models. Until next time, stay curious.